In today's video, I'm going to go over two separate example problems for calculating potential energy, kinetic energy, and total mechanical energy using conservation of energy. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube videos, I see that so many people watching my videos have not subscribed. Please subscribe, support my channel, click the notifications bell, give the thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition, I made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials. You can find my teacher's page, teacher's website. Whether you're looking for practice problems, examples with all the solutions, notes for a bunch of different topics, a bunch of good activities that you can do with PHET Interactive Simulation. It's all there at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. Okay, here is our first example problem. In our first example problem, we have the ramp problem and we have the ball that is going to roll from A to B to C to D. And we also have the ball that's going to go from A and go straight down this way towards E. And when it does that, we are going to be looking at the potential, the kinetic, the mechanical, and the velocity of the ball at each of those four or five points. All right, now before we do that, we have to set up the conditions that we're going to be using for this problem. And we are going to say that the height of the ball up here at A is eight meters. The mass of the ball is three kilograms, and it has a velocity up here at A of zero meter per second. It is at rest. When it comes down the hill here at this point B and C, it's going to have a height of five meters. And at the bottom, of course, the height is going to be zero, which is going to be the same thing over here for point E. All right. Now, in addition to that, we need to know that we are going to say that there's no friction between the ball and the surface of the ramp. And that means that we are going to also approximate G to make the math a little simpler and kind of just get hooked on the math too much, we're just going to say that G is 10 meters per second instead of 9.81. And then we are going to be asking ourselves, okay, what are the forces that are acting on the ball as the ball comes down that ramp? As the ball moves down the ramp and as the ball goes from A to E, what forces are acting on the ball? Well, because we said there's no friction, that means the only force that's going to be acting on the ball is the force of gravity. Okay? And that means that we want to know what is, if energy is going to be conserved or not as the ball rolls down the ramp or as it moves down from A to E. And we are going to say, yes, the energy is going to be conserved. There's going to be no heat taken out or no energy taken out of the system due to friction. So that means that mechanical energy is going to be reserved, conserved, excuse me, and that for any point along there, the mechanical energy is going to remain constant. Okay, and we can use this equation to calculate the mechanical energy. The mechanical energy is simply the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. All right. Okay, now we can get started. Okay, we have our potential energy, our kinetic energy, and our mechanical equations over here. We're going to look first at point A, and point A, we want to know what is the potential energy, the kinetic energy, the mechanical energy, and the velocity. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the potential energy. The potential energy is simply the mass of the ball times g, which we said is 10 times the height. And at the point A up here, the height is 8, the mass is 3, g is 10. And that means that 3 times 10 is 30. 30 times 8 is going to be 240. And that means at the top, the ball is going to have a potential energy of 240 joules like that. Now we also said at the top that it's not moving. So therefore it's going to have a velocity of zero. And therefore when we calculate the kinetic energy, we know that kinetic energy is the energy of motion. It's not moving and therefore it's going to have no kinetic energy because over here you can see zero times anything is going to be zero. And when we want to calculate the mechanical energy, the mechanical energy, we just add up the two kinds of mechanical energy, this potential and kinetic. The total is just going to be adding those two together. And that means the total mechanical energy is 240 joules. So that's our information for point A. And we want to remember that mechanical energy is going to be conserved. So anywhere along the, along the path, whether we go to B, to C, to D, and then to E, the mechanical energy, the total is always going to be the same. We might be changing the potential and converting it into kinetic, but this will always remain anywhere along our path at 240 joules. 
So here we go for B and C. For B and C now, we're going to calculate the, uh, figure out the potential. We're not going to do the calculation because we can just do MGH ourselves. The mass times G is 30 times 5 is 150. So we know at point B, the potential energy is 150. Well, what's the kinetic energy? Well, this is our kinetic energy equation, but we don't know the velocity. So we can't actually calculate the uh, kinetic energy using this equation, but we know that the ball lost some height and therefore it lost some of its, <clears throat> excuse me, it lost some of its potential energy. And where did that potential energy go? Well, that potential energy was converted into kinetic energy. So that potential energy that lost as it comes down the hill was converted into kinetic and now it has some velocity. And we know that these two, the kinetic and the potential have to add up so to 240, so we know when it came down the hill, it lost 90 joules of potential energy, and that energy was converted into kinetic energy, and that means it's 90 joules of kinetic energy coming down the hill just like that, because 150 plus 90 is 240. Okay, so now we want to figure out the velocity. We're going to calculate the velocity using the kinetic energy equation because it has the velocity in it, and we are simply going to rearrange that equation to solve for velocity. And when we do that, we're going to multiply first both sides of the equation by 2, then divide by the mass and take the square root. So we get the velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. That is the equation that we can use to solve for the velocity. And we got that equation for rearranging this equation, solving this equation for the velocity. Okay? We can plug our numbers in because we now we know the kinetic was 90. 2 times 90 divided by 3. And that means we take the square root of that. We get the velocity 7.75 meters per second. So up here it had no velocity. Now it has a velocity of 775. That velocity came from the loss or the conversion of potential energy into kinetic energy. So we have a velocity of 7.75 meters per second. Now at point C, it's the same thing as at point B because we said there's no friction. So the ball is not going to be slowing down due to friction between the ball and the ramp. The ball is at the same height. We could calculate the potential energy, but we would just get the same thing of 150. Once again, we know that the potential plus the kinetic has to equal the mechanical, the total. So the missing energy as it came down the hill was converted. That potential energy of 240 was converted into kinetic at 90. And we know the velocity is the same also because we would just be using the same equation. So the velocity is the same. So when the ball moves from B to C, it's not slowing down. It's not losing any potential. And it's not changing its kinetic. So the values are the same. Okay, now we can go on to D. Now D is at the bottom here. This is for D. We're at the bottom of the hill. The height is zero. Well, that means the potential energy because potential energy is mg times h. h is zero. Anything times zero is zero joules. So it's no potential energy. But why does it have no potential energy? Well, it has no height. Where did all the potential energy go to? It went into the velocity because when the ball reaches the bottom here, it's going the fastest. It has its greatest speed. All the potential energy has converted into kinetic energy. So we know when it comes down the hill, it's lost all its potential. So all that went to kinetic and that means it has 240 joules of kinetic energy. You can see when we move down the hill, we lose height and that the potential energy here at the top is going to be equal to the kinetic energy here at the bottom. We can convert potential energy height into velocity. At the bottom, we can now use our equation to calculate the velocity just the same way, except we know now that it's 240 joules of kinetic energy and that means it's going to be going 12.6 meters per second. All right. Now, at point E, it's basically the same thing at D because it's at the same height, just like we had here at B and C. Those were the same. Well, these are at the same height. It has no height, so it has no potential energy. It has lost all of its potential energy. Well, where did all the potential energy go? It went into kinetic. So we know these two have to add up again to mechanical. So this has to be 240. And if we use, we would be using the same equation, and this would be 12.6 again. All right, as we come down the hill, we're converting potential energy into kinetic energy. We're converting, you can think of height into velocity. Now, some people think it's a little weird. Whether the ball goes down the track this way or the ball falls straight down, it's going to have the same velocity at the bottom. 
Now, it's going to take longer, more time to go from A to B to C to D than it would to fall straight down. The time for this path is greater. But the, because they start out with the same potential, and all of that is converted into kinetic, then their velocities are going to be the same. It doesn't matter the path that the ball takes from the top to the bottom. Okay, that's our first example. And now we're going to go on to our roller coaster example, which we're going to do that right now. And this is our roller coaster example. For our roller coaster example, we know that the potential energy at the top is 660,000 joules. Okay, we're not given the height. We're going to calculate the height in a minute, but we're given the potential energy. We're given the velocity, and we have a roller coaster, and the car on the roller coaster has a mass of 600 kilograms. And we're going to be using the same conditions. We're going to say there's no friction. We are going to say that the, we're going to approximate G again as 10 and not 9.81. Just makes the math a little rounder so we don't focus on uh, the numbers so much, but a little bit more of the concept. And we're going to say that gravity is the only force acting on the car, and we're going to say that the mechanical energy, therefore, is once again going to be conserved. And the potential energy plus the kinetic equals the mechanical, and the mechanical will remain constant anywhere along the path. And we are going to calculate and figure out potential, kinetic, mechanical, the height, and the velocity for all those places, A, B, C, D, and E. So here we go. For point A. Now we're going to calculate all that stuff, but really what we want to know is what is the height. And we're going to use the potential and the kinetic to calculate these values. So let's just go through and fill in the potential. We're given the potential. Okay. This is the equation that we're going to use, but we're given the potential 660,000 joules. At the top has no velocity, so therefore it has no kinetic again. And we know that when we want to calculate the mechanical energy, we add these two together. See? 660 plus 0 is 660,000 joules. Now we want to calculate the height because we know the potential energy. So we can use this equation, which has the height in it, to calculate the height. The height is equal to the potential energy divided by the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We can put in there 60,000, 66, 660,000 divided by 600, the mass, times the acceleration due to gravity. And we get that the height at A right here is 110 meters. So the height's 110. Okay, that's everything for point A. Now we can go on to point B. Point B, we are given that the kinetic energy is 330,000 joules. That's 330,000 joules. We know the mechanical energy is 660,000 because that is going to remain constant. It's not going to change. We figured that out for point A. That's not going to change. Any place along the railroad, excuse me, along the uh, uh, roller coaster track, the mechanical energy of the car is always going to be 660,000. Well, we know the kinetic energy is half of that. Well, where did that energy go? As the car comes down the track, once again, potential energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy. So if this is half, we know that the potential energy is the other half. There's only two kinds of mechanical energy, potential and kinetic. And therefore, we know those two have to add up. And because the potential energy is half of the original, for the height, we calculated 110 on the previous slide. It's lost half of its potential. That means it's lost half of its height. So now the height at B is 55 meters. Okay, just take half of 110 and you get 55. Now we're going to calculate the velocity. <clears throat> okay, the velocity, we're going to use the kinetic energy equation again. The velocity is just going to be the square root of 2 times Ke times divided by m. Plug the values in. Remember now the kinetic energy at point B is 330. So we're going to plug that in here. 2 times 330,000 divided by 600 and you get 33.2 meters per second. So at point B, okay, at point B the car... The roller coaster car has a velocity of 33.2 meters per second. Okay, that's point B. Now we're going to go on to point C. And once again, we want to know the velocity there. Well, what's the potential energy? The car is down here at the bottom. It's lost all of its height. Okay, this is the equation for potential. It's lost all of its height. So therefore, it's lost all of its potential. So where did all the potential energy go that it had? Remember, up here it had 660,000 joules of potential. Well, now it has zero. Where did it all go? That's right. You guessed it. It went into kinetic energy. So it has 660,000 joules of kinetic energy. The bottom, no potential, all kinetic. You can see they switch back and forth kind of. 
potential and kinetic. We convert one into the other. You cannot uh, get rid of energy. Conservation of energy cannot be destroyed. So we can now solve again for the velocity of the same equation. 2 times 660,000 divided by 600 this time. And that means that the velocity at the bottom is 47 meters per second. So at point C, the car has a velocity of 47 meters per second. Okay? Down the hill once again. Less kinetic, less potential, excuse me, less potential, losing potential and gaining kinetic energy. Losing height and gaining velocity. Okay, now on to point D. Two more. What's the height at D? Now we're given the velocity. We know the velocity is 30 meters per second. All right, now we, in order to get the, the height, we need to know the potential. We don't know the potential and we don't know the height, but we can figure out the kinetic, right? We know the velocity. So we're going to calculate the kinetic energy is 100 Excuse me, 1 half 600 times 30 squared. Don't forget to square just the 30. All you do is square 30. It's velocity squared. When you do that, you find out that at point D, because we know the velocity, we know the kinetic energy of the car is 270,000 joules. Well, we know the total energy between these two has to be 660. With kinetic, it's 270,000. The remaining 390 is potential energy. Now, once again, we can use our height equation to calculate the potential, excuse me, our potential energy equation to calculate the height, 390,000 divided by 600 times 10, and we get 65 meters. So this point is 65 meters above the ground. All right, now it was kind of like an a indirect way of calculating the height. First, we had to get the kinetic. Then we had to know that the difference, okay, is the potential, and then we could calculate the height. That's the height at point D. Okay, now at point E, we're going to get the height and the velocity. Last thing here, point E, what is the height? And we're also going to get the velocity. We're given the potential is 120. You can see it's come back up a little bit of height. It's gained some potential. Well, where does that potential energy come from? Potential energy was converted into kinetic. So as it comes up the height, you know, as it comes up the hill here, you know it's probably going to slow down if you have some experience with those kinds of things. And that means it's going to be losing some of its kinetic and gaining potential. So now we know that the difference now between the 120 and the 660 is the kinetic. And that's 540 joules. So at the hill here, it has 540 joules of kinetic energy. And therefore now we can calculate, see, I think we're going to do the height first. Same equ equation, PE is equal to, height is equal to PE divided by M times G. Plug the values in, 120,000 divided by 600 times 10. And you get that the height is 20 meters. Okay, right here, it's at 20 meters. Now, how fast is it going? We can use our kinetic energy equation again to calculate the velocity. The velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times the Ke divided by the mass. That means the velocity is the square root of 2 times 540,000 joules divided by 600. And therefore, you get the velocity at that point is 42.4 meters per second. All right, now we did all this stuff. We calculated the, the potential, the kinetic, the mass, and the height. Really, the main thing from the video that you're supposed to understand is conservation of energy and that the mechanical energy always remains constant. We know the sum of the potential and the kinetic at any point. We know that that's going to remain constant because we said there's no friction. You're not losing any energy due to heat. So that's 660. And we know at any point along the path, the potential and the kinetic have to add up to that total. Okay, so you got to think if I know one, I can calculate the other. If I know the velocity, if I know the height, I can usually get one of them and then get the other for the difference. Okay, so there you go. I hope that really helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things before I lose my voice here. Um, you should uh, subscribe. Please support our channel, Step by Step Science. Get all our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Give us a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. That's right. We will see you in the next video.